when we talked about work, it seemed like we were talking, we were had a lot, we were saying a lot of the same things. We were just approaching it differently, and it seemed like a really sensible idea of why don't we try to make some work together and bring these two uh, ways of thinking together in the way we think about materials and see what kind of interesting stuff can happen. And ideas as well, not yeah. just materials, but we're both interested in, and again, this juxtaposition between natural and cultural elements. So this installation, Time and Disregard, uh, essentially addresses a larger theme about culture's uh, consumption of nature and or the unsustainable way uh, the two interact at this point. And what's a tree represent to anybody? They think of outdoors, they think of, in most cases, nature. Uh, and I mean, I think a, a lot of what we've been doing with materials has a lot to do with how it's treated as much as what it is. Um, so. I mean, a large part of this, proj this project uh, has to do with how we're presenting the tree, um, you know, metaphorically as, as a thing, and also what, you know, people associate with, with it being a living organism, it being a, you know, a plant being taken from its natural setting, etc. Yeah, there seems to be an opposite of uh, this tree in its, nat in its natural setting. The idea is for the viewer to, the viewer's reaction to this. Uh, that they're not exactly sure what's happening is is the true you know tree being pulled up is it being planted um, and that reaction I think is what we're most concerned with when we when we thought of the the title pervasive thoughts in my mind were you know uh, it takes it takes time for things to grow to establish to lit to uh, to exist and uh, you know in my mind's eye here we are fleeting second in the history of the planet just really making a mess of things you know and uh, and the idea of disregard being, you know, how we, we don't really think about our ram the ramifications of our actions. We have a notion of what we want to use for materials uh, because those of the associations we attach to those materials. Uh, the way he thinks of how he likes to use burlap, the way I like to think about how uh, we potentially might use plant life, how it's video appropriate for this piece, how would it, we use it, what would it, what would it say, what would it be. Um, you know, and, and we just kind of feel it out from there and let, let the associations present the solutions to how are we going to do this? How do they speak to each other? You know, I mean, this has been revised how many times? Six times maybe? Yeah. At um, least? We have certain ideas, but we also like to leave it open for the viewer's uh, reaction, for the viewer's interpretation. Uh, there's definitely numerous different ways to enter this piece and yeah. ways to think about this piece. I grew up uh, in the middle of the woods, uh, surrounded by woods. And uh, that's all I knew for the first 10 years of my life, and then moved to the city. So I always attribute those materials and that, uh, that process to my, uh, my life, the last 30 years of my life. I'm influenced by the things I absorb around me. Um, I've lived in a lot of places. Uh, East Tennessee and, and the Appalachian Mountains certainly have had a large influence uh, as of the last five years about my approach to making work. I came to those mountains, I'm like, holy smokes, I can't get my head around what I'm seeing. And so, you know, a video camera came into my hand pretty fast, and I started uh, working with video at that point. Um, but in general, I mean, I, you know, life experiences to a large degree influence the way I think about what I want to say and how to say it in my artwork. Yeah, I think I would agree with Travis, definitely. I've got a certain bank of artists that I uh, reference, you know, a Andy Goldsworthy, uh, Oliver Eliasson. Uh, but I think more than artists, uh, I, don't, I don't try to keep myself from looking you know, at Sculpture Magazine and different things, but uh, I think for me it's more taking walks with my camera and uh, getting inspiration just from my natural surroundings. My standpoint is uh, if you want to make art, you make art. And as far as an emerging artist who wants, I don't, what are your intentions, what do you want to do? Uh, if you've got ideas, you make them. And you don't you don't really know you don't know what you can do or what you can make or where you can go and unless you really think about your artwork first and and you got an idea you make an idea and you document that idea and you show it to people and you get their responses and you put it in more people's hands and you send it around and let people see it. I mean, exposure goes a long way regardless if it's good or bad. Uh, what do they got to say about your work? Two things I would say is you got an idea, you try yeah. to make that idea and you show it to people and see what they have to say about it. A lot of times, an artist wants to quit, uh, especially as an emerging artist, and it's 
it, it's going to happen all the time. It, it, it's still happening. So uh, my advice would be just keep on doing it. Perseverance, uh, as well as integrity. You know, do do what you think you're meant to do, and keep doing it, no matter what.